Hi, I'm Toby and this tutorial is a walkthrough through all the functions from my new Max for Life device for Ableton Live called Melody Trigger. So what does it do? So this device is built for drummers who want to trigger melodies, not only drummers, but uh, I'm a drummer myself, I do the ableton.drummer.com web page, um, the, Ableton Drummer the Ableton Drummer Facebook group, and um, I do a lot of teaching about Ableton Live and drumming, a lot of programming and stuff. So my perspective here is coming from the drum side of things, but of course you can use this device with uh, Push 2 as well or with other MIDI, external MIDI devices which are sending MIDI notes. So this device is built to help drummers to play melodies, play chords, play samples in a more tonal and more expressive way. This stuff is possible to some extent natively in uh, Ableton Live as well but it's not a really nice and creative workflow you're getting there if you're just using the native stuff. And of course some limitations here as well. So for this purpose to get a really nice workflow and to be able to get in there quick and make this more accessible to more people I built this device. So let's have a look what it does. So this device is very similar to a MIDI clip in Ableton Live you can um, draw notes here by clicking into fields. You can fold the section here, the piano roll. You can zoom in, you can zoom out, and you can do some preview stuff here as well. So you can preview the notes you are drawing in here as well. So the beauty here is that you get actually a trigger section here. So you can trigger step by step through this whole sequence you could say or this clip sequence if you want to. So uh, you can do this via your mouse or you can use the MIDI map mode from Ableton and map this to any controller here. For example an SPDSX but you could use of course um, a bob pad or any other um, external MIDI hardware which is sending notes. So as easy and accessible this MIDI mapping here is in the native MIDI map mode in Ableton Live it comes with some limitations which are not very ideal for drummers. So for example um, this button here or the usual Max for Live buttons you see I have to hit them twice it only reacts to a note on So I have to hit it twice to do this. It's different with my mouse, obviously. Yeah, the button turns off straight away. So I added a map mode toggle to a momentary or switch button. So if it's momentary, the button will turn off by itself again. And that applies to all the trigger buttons we're gonna have in this device. So per default, this is set to the mode momentary so you don't have to think about this if you're not confused already. Okay, so um, as nice it is to MIDI map or to use Ableton Live's MIDI map mode, um, it's a bit of a limitation here as well because obviously you're now losing this pad or this MIDI note to play tonal stuff here or to use the note later on for example if you're playing live in your performance later on you want to use this pad with this MIDI note being sent for something else so and this is not possible anymore because it's MIDI map now to this button and it stays there in the whole set so I found a way to actually do this in a much nicer way I added those uh, different sections here which you can use for syncing MIDI notes from your external controller to this function, in this case the trigger step by step through the sequence function. So you're getting a range, so if you have, um, if you want to have a range to trigger this step by step function here or you get 
uh, two single buttons here. So for example, I have uh, a single button here. I can just press on S. So it's waiting for the MIDI note to come in. I just can hit a pad and it detects which MIDI pitch is coming in automatically and it's then set already. So this is a quicker way to do this and it's a more flexible way because in the end you can uh, automate this uh, input note here if you need to later in your set. If you want to change it, you can change the um, parameters. Let me quickly look this up. So if you select the parameter you want to automate here, so now this add note pitch one, um, you can actually change this later on in a set via a MIDI dummy clip if you need this. Okay, so let's get rid of this again. So you have one more big advantage here as well for drummers, not only for drummers, but for everyone who wants to play more dynamically. So if you're just mapping um, a MIDI controller to a button here, it's just receiving the trigger on off signal and that's it. If you do it via nodes, you can actually use some live velocity input here. So if I switch this on, nothing is happening because mm, it's not mapped to the right MIDI note pitch, but you see how quick this is. If I hit the pad right, you can hear the volume now is changing, so the velocity changes according to the velocity I'm hitting here. Yeah, And the same goes for the duration. I can't show you this on the SPDSX because the SPDSX doesn't go for duration. Um, but um, if you're using a bob pad here, for example, it will release a note when you release the pad. So this is the first section which is really basic for just triggering simple step-by-step -step sequences. Okay, so next let's have a look on the direct edit section here, which is for editing the sequences and for selecting the views to reset all nodes to off, um, because per default, um, if you open up a step sequencer, a melody trigger, sorry, step sequencer here will be all notes will be set to C minus two and to off. So you can just see that there is something in here. So you can see now there is a note A minus one. So if I double click on it, it goes away, but I still see some yellow lines over here. So this is a note off, but there's still a note. So this is um, a different, or this is a difference to um, MIDI clips in Ableton Live, you just have a break, you just have a rest, where you have a rest, you have no MIDI note. But in the step sequence, because you're going to the next sequence, you're going to the next step, I mean, um, obviously, if you want to have a break, you need to have some notes in between here. Let me quickly show you the, this. So, for example, we got a C, and then we got a break, and then we have another C, and then maybe another break, and then a D. So if I trigger this now, Let's reset this first and go to reset, break, hit but break, next step and the next note. Okay, so you can have up to 16 sequences here. So uh, you can select those up here for example. So you can have 16 by 64 steps each. So you can have really long melodies here and you're not only getting some pitch information, you're not drawing in some pitch information, you have five different values you, have, you can draw in here. Let us zoom this a bit in here to make this a bit more and better visible. So you, obviously you got the pitch, the pitch of the note, which note should be played. Then you got the velocity, so you can actually have quieter notes or louder notes and this is similar to the whole MIDI clip editing here as well in Ableton. So a lower, lower velocity obviously is a quieter note, will trigger a quieter note. 
Cool. So you can see here that you have the values you are actually editing. You get them represented on this bar here. The next value would be the duration. So you can set different durations here. For example, let me show you this as well. Let's put in, take the same sequence here again. Let's press reset. Longer note, shorter note, yeah? So there is some limitation here. We're only going from half notes down to 128 notes so but this is all relative to the master tempo so if you want longer notes for example you can just put this down so i just make an example to 60 for example so and now i'm getting obviously longer notes because a half note would be longer if you have um, a lower bpm value Yeah, so if I put this up to 120 and set this up to a half note again, let's press reset. Yeah, and you could see that uh, when you're changing the tempo here, it resets to the 16th note value here. Okay, so um, we get two more extra values here, and those are being interested, being interesting to. Um, have some extra values which you can use later on. I will show this uh, in the tutorial later on to map and to access or to change parameters in Ableton Live. For example, this could be uh, could control a delay effect. For example, each step is triggering a different value on a delay effect. For example, all this can be used to send out uh, MIDI control change data. So uh, this could go out to a synthesizer as well to change, um, don't know, whatever, the attack or something, if you want to use this. Okay, so we got those two extra values here as well. And if we switch back to all, we can see all values here, the pitch, um, the velocity, and the two extra values. And if we go a bit like this, we can see the note values here as well. So for example, if I put the note values up, I can do this here as well in the sequence edit. So if I put those up um, or put those down, you can see the notes are getting longer or shorter. Because I'm doing a screen recording here, the uh, menu is showing up on my second screen. This is weird. Okay, but still you can see uh, what's happening here. So if I change the values, um, it's changing the note length visually as well. So as we have the opportunity to put in 16 sequences in here, obviously some sequences you want to change automatically to the start. You want to reset the sequence to the start when you change. So you want to play the sequence from the top. But sometimes you just want to take off from the point from the step you were in the sequence before. Yeah? And you can set this individually for each sequence here. So this means let us set this up quickly. So for example, I have a sequence where I play a C2, 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 and then a B, and then a C2 again. And then I have another sequence where I play C3, D3, C3, and a D3 again. So when I'm now triggering this, yeah, and now I'm changing to another sequence, I'm starting from the beginning again because this sequence is set to reset when on change. Yeah, so if I put this reset button to off, I'm now picking up from the sequence or from the step in the sequence I was before. So maybe I play one, two, now I'm changing and now the step three will be, will be triggered. Yeah. So I actually can change in between sequences and take from the step on so I can create some random and some expression here. Maybe if I have really long sequences and maybe I'm only playing 
not step by step, but when we will come to this in a second, I can create some really nice creative flow here as well and picking off from a melody um, or from a sequence where I was before. So um, I can set all notes to off and reset. Bam. So now the note information is gone. Let's do this again here. So if I press all notes off and reset, they are all going down to C minus two. You just can see those down here. Okay, so the last section in here is um, a sequence selection, uh, sequence uh, and step selection on start when you load this set. So this means, for example, if you have a bigger set with multiple instances of the melody trigger device, you actually want to start them all at the same sequence and at the same step. And this is what you can put in here. So let's say you want to start at sequence two at step seven. So when I'm now saving this Ableton Live set and it opens up, it will start from this exact point I'm putting in here. One thing here, you have a zero sequence in here, which becomes interesting later on if you're triggering with one pad, um, chords, and sequences on the same time in different instances of melody triggers. This becomes handy because you actually want to select with the first hit, you want to select the first sequence. But if you're hitting on, the, uh, on one of the melody trigger setup, playing a chord and jumping to the next sequence, it will already jump to the second sequence here. So this is a syncing up thing. It's, it's already going pretty, pretty deep here. So, but just to let you know if you are getting into this problem that you're not synced, this is a section to do this. And here is a um, fire button as well. So you can actually fire those values as well. So you could MIDI map or key map this button here and just have a pad. If you need a reset, you just hit it. And all uh, the different instances of melody trigger could go to this point and will play from this point again. Okay, so let's have a look on the different edit sections we got in here. So the first one is called trigger edit. So um, we get some functions here, which I love. It's just like, yes, and that was what people were asking me for on earlier versions of a similar device I released. Like it would be great to not only go step by step, but go reverse here as well. So let us quickly set this up on my SPDS X here. So I just have a MIDI sync function here for every different button. And you can see here already, we are getting into a conflict here of one node is triggering step forward and one node will be triggering the random function. So I get some red box here showing me, actually I have the same note pitch values in here and they will conflict because I can't trigger one step. Uh, I can't trigger the next step and a random step with the same MIDI note at the same time. It just doesn't make sense. So uh, yeah, it's giving me that and actually the device wouldn't work or it wouldn't trigger. Um, right, so uh, we got those reverse random. Um, so this works like this. So next step, my original pad, which is the D1 here. And then I get a reverse, which is one step back. And then random. So this will pick a random step. So this doesn't sound really nice if I have so many notes here, but if I have a bit fewer notes, um, I can get some really nice effects already here. Yeah, you see what I mean? It's like you can be really expressive here. You, so you can just put in some scales, some blues or pentatonic scales in here and just improvise really easy with just one pad playing random notes. Um, and maybe if, it, if you don't want it too random, you have a few options here, which is repeat, for example, which is 
repeating the last note which was played or the last step if you want so which was played easy okay so we have a reset function here as well which we can trigger um, via a pad as well so if you need to start from the top from the beginning of the sequence again because maybe you forgot and you know when you play live things are happening so and maybe you need to think or maybe you, ah shit i want to start from the from the beginning again again which pad did i take i took a different pad here let's take this one okay so i'm playing the melody and then i want to start from the beginning again i have to hit the reset pad it's not playing a note it's just putting it back to the beginning and then when I'm hitting the step-by-step -step pad again the trigger where you hear for next step it's starting from there again so if you have some longer sequences here you might want to jump in certain parts so you could have because you can have quite long sequences here you could say okay I have maybe my first melody from step one till step 16 and then maybe at step 17 the next melody starts and so on and so forth so um, you can actually have some jump points here as well I'm going to demonstrate this uh, just with a little bit of fewer steps here so it's it's just the visibility is much much better here so let's take maybe about eight steps here and Let's say we want to play, um, jump to the first step. So this will go to the first step here and play the note pitch and the velocity, depending if you have um, using live velocity or live duration. So all this information in here from the first step. And if I go to the jump to the fifth step, um, it going to the fifth step and is playing from here. And again, if we have conflicting note pitch values, um, here it will show us, the device will show us and notify us that we actually have some trigger um, problem here. So let's set those notes. D1. Let's use a different one. And let's set this one to this pad here. So I now can... And if I want to jump to a certain point... Okay, so that's just really easy because I'm taking it slow. This is like the beginner's tutorial to actually see stuff. So I'm not making huge melodies here, which are sounding amazing and nice. I'm doing some other videos for that, already did some stuff. So um, yes, this is like understanding. So I keep it to a basic level, obviously. So you can see here as well that we get some red boxes, two red boxes here as well. and. We have jump to step 9. The value here is 9. And why is it lighting up red? Because in this sequence we only have 8 steps. Yeah? So it notifies us that we actually can't trigger step 9 here because there is no step 9. Okay? If you press this button or if you trigger this jump C value here, 9, it will jump to the last step which is available in the sequence so we got seven steps here so it will jump to the last step in the sequence and um, so uh, just if some things happen you still a note will be played so that's good but you know it's not actually the value you were going for cool so that's the whole trigger edit section Okay, so the next part I want to show you is the whole sequence edit part. You get um, another step selector here, so you can select here as well how many steps you want to have in the sequence, like the same here, and they are both synced and will represent the actual values if changed in one or another. You can change the velocity for all the steps here as well so if you remember when you're opening up 
um, your melody trigger, the um, default preset is C minus two and all notes are off. So if you want to change the velocity of all notes here, let's switch on the velocity view here. You can change all those uh, notes which are being represented in the window here. Okay, you can change the duration here as well. And this comes with one limit. You only get um, the values half notes down or up to 128 notes and um, you can change all those notes in here and the menu isn't showing up on my in my screen recording software so I have to move this in here so you can see you can change all those values here and those values obviously are being relative to the master tempo so if you want to change um, the tempo uh, if you want longer notes you could set the tempo down so a half note would get stretched. Okay, so there is one limitation here as well if you have different note values and if you change the master tempo because it has to be relative to the master tempo the values are getting reset here to this value again. Okay, so let's put this to 16 notes in the second window and we can put this down here again. So we have some arrows we can move the notes and the pitches and all the data in here if we want to move those notes for example let's put in something which is actually visible to move so let's fold down this to four steps only so I can move the steps down or up or to the right and because I only have four steps the last note will be put to the beginning the other way around as well if I go into the left first note would be put to the end. So this will move the selected parameter here. So if it's to all, all the parameters in one or all the data in one step will move. And if we put this to um, velocity, for example, only the velocity will change, but the pitch will stay the same. So I can show you this here. If I'm now going to the right, you can see the pitches are staying the same, but the velocity is moving now, okay? So only the visible um, parameters are being changed here. Cool, um, you can randomize the steps. So this is really interesting. And each step is taking with all its data, velocity, duration, extra values, and going to a different place in the sequence. You can randomize the visible, only the visible uh, data here as well. And here you can see as well, only the velocity is now changing and it's just taking values which are in those sequence. It's not putting in random, random uh, values. It's taking values from a different step and putting that um, to a different step as well. So uh, you can see this here, um, if they are all set, to a similar level, for example, you can see not much is being changed because just taking um, the, all the different velocity values you already got in here and just put them is putting them into a different onto a different step. Okay, so um, the scale function really nice because you can apply a scale. Let's go to the pitch view here. Um, have some more notes, and so I put in. D2, I have uh, a lot of different scales in here and the menu again is not showing up. It's showing up on my second screen, which is really weird. But um, this is happening here. So you have a lot of different scales you can actually pick from and then press apply the scale and we'll start from the first value here. So that's the root note, you could say. So D2 in this case. So let's move up a bit so we can see this, that it will move to D2 when I press apply scale. And there we go. So this scale is now being set so I can play the scale. Maybe let's fold this one. Yeah, so this scale is now being triggered and it's a really quick and easy way and it's really nice if maybe you don't wanna play a certain melody but you want to play in a certain scale you want to improvise in a certain scale for example you can yeah 
just use three buttons or three pads or three buttons from your push or whatever and improvise in this scale, in the scale setting. And if you want to go to a different scale, you could have a different scale in the next um, sequence, for example. Yeah. So this way you can improvise using multiple melody triggers here, for example, for different instruments and different sections of your um, tonal experience here. So yes, let's get back to the sequence. Add it here because we got two more really good functions. I love those. Um, I mean, I programmed the device, but I was like, I was really happy when I found out that I was able to make this uh, happen. So, uh, because I compose a lot on a grand piano, uh, on an e-piano, I mean, it would be nice to have a grand piano actually, but um, it's not that easy to get grand piano information into a MIDI clip. But so I compose a lot like uh, playing the E piano and then uh, doing some chords and then doing a melody, doing a bass line. And so I have all these clips and I was like, okay, if I want to now put this composition into performance mode, I want to trigger those different things with my drums. Um, I actually have to put all those things into this grid here and I was like oh that's not really sexy so I was uh, able to find the solution here to actually take something from um, a MIDI clip so let's put in a few notes here so let's say I have those five notes and I want to import those I just need to select the notes go back to the device uh, select the parameters I want to import, pitch, velocity or duration with the um, already told, already pointed out limits. And then press import and now it's coming up here, F sharp 3. So this is the sequence we got here or the five notes we got here. Yeah, they are now being imported and you can actually say, well actually I want those five notes being imported from step number let's say five or let's put it a bit up let's put it up to eight so i can now start to have those notes imported from step eight on onwards so velocity as well uh, duration as well so if i want to take those values from here um, i can import those values as well duration i said this now um, twice already um, is limited to the values half notes uh, down to 128 notes. So, um, breaks. If you have some breaks and melodies, they won't be imported because you have to think this as steps. So, um, the melody trigger things, these are five steps, these are five notes. I don't have an information here, so there is nothing to import. So, it will it will not import breaks between notes because you have to think in steps. So it would be step one, would be the first note, second note, third note, fourth note, no step, so no information. So this would be the fourth step here. So if you want to put in some uh, breaks here, you could actually put in a C minus two and maybe put the velocity down to one. So it's really obvious when you need to edit out um, those notes as breaks and the sequence later on you can do this it's one way on how to do this um, maybe you have an instrument which doesn't play so for example the grand piano uh, instrument um, doesn't has a sample of C minus 2 so there would be no now note or no sound would be triggered here anyways so um, yeah even if I don't have even if I have a note there and even if the velocity is on and not set to zero, it won't, wouldn't trigger a sound anyway. So you could use this with some instruments um, here as well. Okay, so last section in here would be duplicating some parts from the sequence you're in. So for example, if I have, let's say I want to have those three notes, um, step three, step four, step five, I want to have this duplicated to step four, six step seven step eight so 
I can select which range I want to duplicate. So this was three, four, five. So I have to set the range here, three up till five. And I now have to press copy and then I have to paste it and I have to set obviously where I want to paste this. So I want to paste this from step six onwards. So now if I press paste, those three nodes are being duplicated. Yeah. So these, uh, it's not a very good example because mm, it would be much quicker obviously to just put in the values in here. Yeah. Um, quick and easy for three steps. But if you have a really long sequence of like 32 nodes and you want this sequence to be similar, but maybe a few changes later on. So you need to duplicate the sequence of this 32 steps in the same sequence. Um, this is a really quick way um, and it's really nice to get things done here quick because you want to stay in your creative flow workflow and not like being like spending time and losing your creative energy while putting in stuff here. Okay, so uh, this was sequence edit section, the, th the sequence edit section. Let's look on the next section. Okay, so the next section here would be the play edit section. So this is all about having multiple sequences in one device and changing the sequences. So um, let's let me show you a different approach. So for example, we have only a few nodes in each sequence. Maybe that could go for a baseline. So let's say we have those four nodes here, um, which would sound like this. Yeah, let's switch off the live velocity for now. And then we have the next sequence here, maybe four steps as well, and maybe Mm, we just learned we can copy this really easy. Um, so one, two, four, eight. let's copy this from the first sequence. So we can actually copy here from sequence to another sequence as well. And now we have the same sequence in here. Maybe we want to change this just for a little bit. Do, 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 do. So the second sequence now would sound like this. Yeah, first sequence, second. And let's set the sequence down to two because we don't need more for the showing purposes here now. So I can now move with those arrows to the next sequence or to the sequence before. So if I'm on sequence one and I click on the next sequence, yeah, and then again, it would jump to the beginning again of sequences and of course I can do the same like with the notes and I can actually have some notes in here but at the same time so reverse would be triggered on the same time like the moving to the next sequence but I want this to my functions at once so um, for showing you I mean not for later on for playing it's great but so I have those notes And this is actually a really good example here now. Um, maybe I want a note being played as well when I'm hitting the sequence change here. So I can just add this note to play notes here as well. And this brings me to a really important topic because if I'm now hitting this, you can see maybe already that it's playing the note from the sequence before because I have one note, one pad here now, which is doing a trigger of the, of the current step and a change to the next sequence. And it's set up in this order. If you want it in a different order, if you want change the sequence first and then play the step of the new sequence, you have to prioritize the sequence change. And that's what you can do here. It's clever, isn't it? Yeah, so um, just to make sure that you all un understand this. So I'm playing the sequence. And now I'm changing 
but I not getting the new note, the first new note of the newly selected sequence here. I'm getting the last note from the sequence beforehand. Yes, but if I set this to prio, prioritize, the sequence will change first and then a note will be triggered from the new sequence. Yeah, you get the picture. So this way you change with the hit and because if the hit means change and you want a note there, you don't want a note from the sequence before and you want a note from the um, sequence here. This will add some tiny latency here because the change is happening before. Obviously, okay, cool. So we have random sequence here as well. So with two sequence, that doesn't make much sense. But if I have four sequences here, I can press or I can hit, I can trigger random and it will jump to a random sequence. So here as well, really nice. If you have different melodies you want to improvise over, you can go into a different setting and it selects you a random setting. So you get some feedback here from the computer to, yeah, to, 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 to play, to improvise and to, um, yeah, to not always know what's going to happen next, but you have to program a setting which you think fits musically, harmonically like you want it. And then you just hit it and you see when you perform or when you play for yourself where it's taking you. Okay, similar to the jump to uh, trigger steps here, uh, we got some similar thing here. If you want to trigger a certain sequence, let's say sequence one or sequence three or whatever number um, or which, whatever sequence you want to, you can add this here. So this will be uh, shown in a in a tutorial I'm going to make, which is going to be less technical, it's going to be more musical, um, about blue sections, so how to jump to a certain section on multiple devices to play the bass uh, line and to play the chords and to play the melody all together and to change them all together in multiple melody trigger devices, triggering different melodies, but all changing to a certain sequence sequence with which has a certain harmonic setting yeah so this is the play edit function here it gives you a lot of uh, possibilities to set up changes here randomly go into a circle back uh, forward or backwards or to jump to a certain sequence okay so the last section i want to show you is called extra edit section so we finally are getting to this point where I can explain you what these extra one and extra two values are for. So this is all editable and looks very similar to the velocity or the duration value here. And those are two extra values which could be edited and sent out with every step to other parameters enabled in live or as MIDI control change to lightning software or to video software or to a hardware synthesizer or anything which speaks MIDI control change or can receive and do something awesome with MIDI control change data. So um, let's go to the extra one section here and let's create maybe a nice fade up. Let's put the number step numbers here down. So I can now step through those different um, steps here. I have no sound on or all notes off. And uh, let's set some, maybe some C major here. I went to randomize, which was wrong. I wanted to go to apply scale. C major scale, let's set the velocity to 100. Yeah, so I now have in the pitch section those notes, bomb, and on the same time, I, got, I get those extra values, uh, extra one values here, which I set up to go up when I get a higher pitch. So now I want to map those extra values here maybe to the delay sent 
button here, so to the return track B. So I need to go to the extra edit, I need to switch on CC or map or both. So let's keep both um, being open and then I can just go to the map button, press the map button and select the parameter I want to map in Ableton Live. Yeah. So those parameters here at the bottom um, or those values here are being sent to the mapped parameter. So this is the same for the extra added two. So I could add something else here, maybe just do the reverb going into the, the other direction. So let's turn on the map, select the map for mapping, select the mapping parameter or the parameter you want to map and now you have yeah you can get really detailed here and you can remap stuff in the melody trigger device as well if you want to have some uh, things happening here on the same time maybe at the end of a sequence it could look like this something is switching or something else is happening however the map buttons are really great because they're mapping really quickly, really easy. But I have to say my experience with map buttons and, and, and I mean I programmed them so I know like what's happening but still like even in like custom, not custom, in like uh, presets from Ableton Livestock presets um, you get map buttons which are not always 100% remembering the values and stuff so it's just a personal feeling and maybe people have different opinions and people know like uh, no worked stable for them all the time always when I would have the option to go via MIDI control change um, this would be a much more stable solution from my perspective and my experience so even if you want to control stuff in uh, Ableton Live, you could send out CC values to a virtual MIDI bus and then route those back into Ableton Live and map these things. This is like really well described in the manual as well. You need some extra tools for that and um, I'm gonna show this in a different tutorial later on because it's like it's really nerdy stuff if you don't know, if you never have used um, internal MIDI routing, virtual MIDI routing here. So this is just to give you the overview here what is possible and what you can do with the extra edit section here. So what else did I forgot to mention? Um, you have a view selection here so maybe you have a melody trigger and you have all your stuff set in there and you don't need to see all the stuff here. Maybe you want to control the sounds more and for not scrolling like um, via the whole bar if you have lots of instruments and a lot of audio effects in here you don't always want to scroll like through the long sequence here and yeah so of course you can fold it down like this as well but I just thought it would be a nice thing to add and you have I had some space there to fill so I think it's a good uh, way thing to have Cool. Um, one thing I want to mention, and I'm going to mention this um, in, on other places as well for the marketing, and um, this device is really flexible. You can do a lot of things with it. Um, I did it and I programmed it to my best knowledge. So, obviously, um, you have you're always limited on what your system actually is able to do. So um, I think it's stable, it works really, really stable. Um, but of course there is a limitation of how many devices you can use. Because it has so many functions and it's so flexible, um, it's not the slimmest device. It's like, um, yeah, if you have want to have like hundreds of sequences in one Ableton Live set. I personally would go for another device of mine, uh, the Simple Step Sequence device, um, and not for such a big de device like X 
40 times or something. So I think there's a limit once from your system, but the device is not the best solution for having like 50 devices in one set. The loading time takes a little bit longer. Well, not only a little bit, but it's, it's, it's not a small device. It can do so much. Uh, it can do a lot. So this way it got quite heavy, you could say so to work properly and to have all those functions in there. So I want to mention this here as well. I said I'm going to mention it at other places as well, um, where uh, so that people don't get the wrong impression here. Of course, the main limitation you get is like your system, your computer, you are using your sound card, what kind of MIDI equipment you are using and you have all those different things are adding little latency times, obviously, and this sums up to hopefully not that big amount of milliseconds, but latency is happening there, of course. Um, cool. So I hope you're going to have a lot of fun with the device. Um, obviously, there are going to be more updates and uh, more presets coming up. So make sure you are subscribed into my Ableton Drama newsletter. You will find this on the abletondrama.com homepage. If you have further questions, and I'm sure a lot of people are going to have a lot of questions, um, please come to the Ableton Drama Facebook group um, and ask your questions there because it really helps other people to see the answers or maybe to think about the question, question you got. Um, so it's not only on me to answer those questions, maybe developing and bringing in new ideas on how to solve um, an issue you got like and um, with how to do a certain thing so um, this is really important not only like me having those to answer and um, yes you probably will get a quicker answer in the Facebook group um, if you are posting there okay cool take care have fun with the device and um, yes talk to you soon bye bye